We have all made mistakes over the years, Hosea. Every last one of us. But I kept us together. Kept us alive. Kept the nooses off our neck. When we first met Dutch back in 2010, he was a shadow of his former self, aging and delusional, and it was admittedly hard to imagine him at the helm of one of the Wild West's most notorious gangs. You're the master now. I've been my master since you left me to die. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. His complex downfall was fully explored in 2018's prequel with players as Arthur Morgan, witnessing his descent into madness and desperation. But how did he rise to that position in the first place? After all, everybody has to start somewhere. Where's John? I tried. I tried. He didn't make it. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're exploring the origins of Dutch Vanderlind of the Red Dead Redemption series. Be warned, there are many spoilers ahead. I had a goddamn plan! Dutch is one of the most complex characters in Red Dead Redemption who initially has motivations other than a desire for money or a loyalty to his brother in arms. Of course, he certainly does want money, and at the beginning of Red Dead Redemption 2 is loyal to his comrades. But Dutch is driven by an even more elusive goal, ultimate freedom. A philosopher at heart, Dutch has a deep-seated dislike of government and believes in ultimate freedom for every man. Then we move again, head out around them, be west of Uncle Sam, in a few months, buy some land. I hope so. Would you just look around you? While the United States is already the world's leading proponent of freedom, Dutch's idealism is much more extreme and is what leads him to a life of crime outside the law. He has a vision of a savage utopia, a world where he wishes to carve for himself and the other members of the gang where they can truly live as free men, which is the dream they always find themselves chasing. It's done. This place ain't no such thing as civilized. It's man. So in love with greed, he has forgotten himself and found only appetites. Dutch is the ultimate embodiment of the idealized Old West, fearing modernization of its lawless landscape above all else, which in turn leads him to hate the industrialists for bringing technology like factories and railways across the US. He's also seemed to have some socialist ideations, firmly believing that a portion of every take be contributed to the camp funds so that the gang at large will benefit. And remember, whatever it is that you find, the camp gets its slice. In essence, Dutch is the epitome of everything the federal government wants to stamp out, which is why they pursue him so relentlessly, though he would rather commit suicide than find himself incarcerated. We have got something, something to live and die for. How awful for us. Mr. Milton, stop following us. We'll be gone soon. I'm afraid I can't. He views himself as the last line of defense between the modernization of East Coast tycoons while simultaneously as a Robin Hood-esque hero of the people, robbing from the rich to give to the poor. In theory only, though. In reality, not everybody the Vanderlyn gang rob is rich, nor do they give regularly to impoverished persons outside of the gang. So, here we are in a strange land of papists and rapists. America's very own Gamora. This city's all of the same to me. But Dutch is more of a man out of time than he'd like to admit. While he strives to return to days gone by, he also preaches tolerance and acceptance that we're more familiar with today, like having many women, like Abigail and Miss Grimshaw in racial minorities, like Lenny and Charles in his gang. Dutch and his gang stand against many forms of discrimination we know as wrong today, like aiding the early suffrage movement, helping Native American tribes, and fighting against Guarma slave masters. Though, as we'll learn later, that principle doesn't last. Yes. Now, it is gonna be okay. We mean you no harm. Miss, miss. This is because of the role of his father in the American Civil War, fighting for the Union for the abolition of slavery. My daddy died in a field in Pennsylvania, fighting this lot. I ever tell you that? Many times. We don't know his name, but we know that he died at the Battle of Gettysburg. He died a hero in Dutch's eyes, inspiring his humanitarian philosophies and beliefs in equality and freedom. We are dreamers in an ever duller world of facts. Now I'll give you that, but come on! But unfortunately, 
Dutch's relationship with his mother Greta was fraught to say the least. He was just 15 when he left home for good in 1870 and immediately found himself on the wrong side of the law. Not a lot is known about this period, but it did see the beginning of his long-running feud with Komal Driscoll. I still believe in you. Better world. Pure world. Hm? How's that coming along? The two had a brief partnership in their youth, but it eventually all went sour after Dutch murdered Colm's brother and Colm, in retaliation, murdered Dutch's lover, Annabelle. I am sorry about your brother. Yeah, well, I never liked him much. I liked Annabelle. Little is known about Annabelle or her relationship with Dutch, but he cared about her enough to eradicate the entire O'Driscoll brood. What are we doing here, Comb? Is this thing over? At some point, though it's unclear whether this was before or after the rivalry with O'Driscoll's was sparked, Dutch met Hosea Matthews, a con man. Supposedly both trying to rob each other at the same time, they unsurprisingly found themselves becoming friends, and Hosea became the first member or even co-founder of the Vanderlyn Gang in 1877. Arthur Morgan was another early member, picked up by Dutch and Hosea when he was 15, only a year after Hosea and Dutch's alliance. Arthur was taught everything he knew by Dutch, and together, the three of them recruited more and more members. Dutch Vanderlyn Finishing School has some strange graduates. That it does. To your good health. Thank you. The most heavily featured and long-running members are the same ones who returned in Red Dead Redemption. John Marston, Abigail Roberts, Uncle, Bill Williamson, and Javier Escuela among them. John and Arthur especially become like Dutch's children, all of them valuing their chosen family of each other much more than their long-deceased blood relatives. Boys, we got some work to do. Interesting work. But first, let's have a drink. But as players know, it wasn't to last. 20 years down the line, and the Vanderlyn gang's luck turned completely after the 1899's disastrous Blackwater Ferry heist and massacre. I ain't had time to ask. Me. What really went down back there on that boat? We missed you. That's what happened. Come on. Players are still being kept mostly in the dark about the details of this job, but what we do know is that things went horribly wrong after Dutch shot a young woman, Heidi McCourt, in the head. This sets in motion their downfall and Dutch's loss of sanity, as the gang are endlessly pursued by law enforcement and they become increasingly desperate. We ain't even got the delusion of being anything but a bunch of killers. We are just trying to survive, Hosea. We don't have a choice. This will end soon. Damn right it will. Eventually, everybody either abandons Dutch or is killed by fighting by his side. And the death of Hosea allows for the dangerous Mika Bell to start manipulating his decisions, leading him to become the reckless radical that would be hunted down by John that we're familiar with from the first game. Best thing we can do is let the weak go. Move on, get our money, and start over. That ain't happening. Well, something's gotta happen, and fast. When the law starts to crack down on him late in the second game, he abandons his social principles mentioned earlier by manipulating the Native American population, fueling the fires of their anger against the settlers and colonists who continue to move further and further onto their land to the point where his actions result in an all-out war. Today we ride once more. Ride with me, ride with us. Ride with us against the factory. I love your courage, son. He becomes bitter, selfish, and while actively seeking revenge on the government, he fails to realize that Mika has been secretly working for the government. Who amongst you is with me? And who is betraying me. When Arthur discovers that revelation and brings it to Dutch, he ends up taking Mika's word over Arthur's, and he wouldn't see the truth for another eight years when John and Sadie finally track Dutch and Mika down. What ends up going through his mind after he shoots Mika and walks away is left up for the player to interpret. Though, we'd be interested to know what you think. <laughs> He shot me. In his final moments, he tells John that the world is changing and that he can't stop it, but that the paradox of it all is that he can't change either, before plunging to his death from a mountain in West Elizabeth. Our time has passed, John.
check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.